Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel, Sarah Speaks Up. And in this video, I'd like to touch on the topic of past shame and guilt, because this is something that has tormented me. And I know there are other people out there who have experienced the same thing. If you have and you feel courageous, let me know in the comments below. But uh, yes, it's something I experienced. And I have to say through the power of Jesus through abiding in him consistently, this has been a distant thing for me now. And I just want to share with you um, what I experienced and how it came to be that I don't experience it anymore. So when I came back to Christ, September 2022, I was dwelling on some things I had done previously that when I would think about them, I'd think, how could I be forgiven for that? Like, what if, what if that came up again and people found out about it? Or, you know, you get tormented by these things, haunted by them. And the great accuser would love for us to stay crippled and stifled by something we have done in the past when the reality and the truth is we are forgiven. And we need to actively walk in that forgiveness. It can't just be hid knowledge. It needs to be something that we are fully believing and walking in every day. That freedom, that forgiveness. So another thing is when, we're, when we have these thoughts, it makes us want to seek relief from our own mind and sometimes in an unhealthy way. And that could be overeating, overspending, drugs, alcohol, um, it could even be something that seems healthy, like working out, but it's like what you're trying to do is take your mind off of your mind and it always comes back after you're done. The thoughts always come back. And that's why we need God to transform us through the renewing of our minds. We need him to do that because our minds, our thoughts will dictate our actions and our habits, which ultimately dictates our entire life. So that's why there's so many verses about letting the spirit um, renew our minds and attitudes, having the mind of Christ, you know, and uh, I just want to read to you Hebrews 10, 12, but our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Once and for all, Jesus paid it all. So for us to dwell on something we've already been forgiven for. It's like putting Jesus back up on the cross. He suffered for it. His blood shed and poured out for every sin you committed and every sin you will commit. So in 17, he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. It's almost too good to be true, but that's how good God is to us. That's how gracious he is. He's willing to forget everything and wipe the slate clean so that we can walk in the freedom of Christ and use that freedom not to continue sinning, but use it to love everyone, to serve others. So we're not bound to our sinful nature anymore when we're in Christ. When we deviate from this word, when we deviate from our relationship with Jesus, that's when we forget who we are, what God has done for us, and what we're even doing here. So we need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Our brains are capable of creating new neural pathways. And while you might not forget something completely, you can fill your brain with so many good things, so many things you're grateful for, that that thought that was haunting you and keeping you in shame and guilt is going to become a distant memory. And one day you're going to say, wow, I haven't thought about that in a long time. I want to read something to you. The reticular activating system of your brain, it is a network of neurons that reminds us of what is important to us so it can filter out unnecessary information. So to, we can fill this portion of our brain with thankfulness and gratitude. We will begin to look for evidence of it in our lives, despite the enemy's efforts to have us focus and act out on the negative. So we can actually physically, on a scientific level, change the way we think, but it requires that fruit of the spirit, self-discipline. 
And we need to fix our thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. Philippians 4.8. Why did, why are there so many verses about the mind and to fix your thoughts on the good things? Because our mind and our thoughts are so powerful. God created us like that for a reason. Sarah's mind might say, I'm an, I'm an addict. I used to say that all the time. I have an addictive personality. You know what? I stopped speaking that over myself because the thoughts have power and then the words carry power. So for me to keep speaking that over myself means I'm living in that. I'm actualizing the fact that I'm a, an addictive person. But I don't want to be that because you know what God's truth says? It says that I'm a new creature. God's truth says I am a conqueror, more than a conqueror. So we need to shift. We need to shift so that we can be just like Jesus and walk in the authority that he's given us. If you're dealing with really bad compulsive thoughts, I highly recommend fasting and praying, of course. But when you pray, really believe it. Really believe that God is going to see you through, that he's doing a work. And yes, it's good to fast and to pray, but we need to collaborate. We need to cooperate, meaning there's work for us to do too. It's not just, okay, God, take this thought away from me and poof, it's gone. Sometimes we need the thorn to push us into a disciplined life of living, craving, hungering for the Holy Spirit. Waking up, getting into the word right away. There's nothing more beautiful than that. So God can supernaturally take us out of our old thinking patterns, out of those old, shameful, guilty thoughts that are crippling us and keeping us in a place where we can't move forward and bring us into the new. And he's done it for me and he can do it for you. That's why... The Bible says to conquer evil with good, because if you fill your life and your mind with so many good things, it crowds out the bad things. It crowds out the negative. It starves the bad. So fill your life with good things, with serving others, with finding new ways to, to show random acts of kindness. And it's just going to have such a powerful effect on you, your walk with Jesus, on the way you think. Philippians 4.13. This is my last little piece of this video. <sighs> but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. God is calling us higher. We need to walk in the fact that we've been forgiven, that we've been set free. That's up to us, though. So I just want to take the moment to, uh, to pray with you, to pray over myself and anyone who's watching this video. Heavenly Father, we submit our mind and our thoughts to you. Please cleanse us. Cleanse us of those thoughts that are haunting us and make it so real and vivid to us that we are forgiven and that we are free. Lord, show us, teach us how to walk in that fully. Give us the strength and the courage. Lord, renew our minds, renew our thoughts every day, starting today and every day. We invite your supernatural power into our minds and we plead the blood of Jesus over these thoughts that you would remove them and replace them with good, with admirable, lovely, beautiful thoughts. And we thank you, Father, that we have a chance to change, to be transformed, that your mercies are new every morning. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching this video. 
and please like this if you would like to see more people see it be inspired to overcome and uh yeah if you feel like subscribing that's great if not no pressure <laughs> see you in the next video